Welcome back, everybody. Now it's time for the main event of this episode, and it's going to be another edition of Superstar Scores. This one's going to go for the recently retired Santino Morella. This is our, I think, seventh uh, Superstar Scores that we've done in the past, and we've gotten some really uh, high up there legends like Shawn Michaels, who was the first one. We've done Triple H. We did uh, The Ultimate Warrior right after he passed away. Bob Core Holly, uh, right after we had done the whole the Bob Core thing. Mick Foley was another one that we did, and uh, RVD. I think that's the, the list of everybody that we've done so far. Still waiting on Buff Bagwell. Yeah, we still got to pull out the Buff Bagwell card. We'll do that eventually. And um, we'll do that one of those like boring days where we have nothing uh, planned, nothing crazy going on. So and, next week on Smack Talk. <laughs> possibly, you never know. Um, but Santino is going to be an interesting one because he has been pretty much just like a jobber for the majority of his career. So obviously he's not going to get a really high ranking when it comes to like credibility points and everything like that. But you never know. I mean, um, we've had stranger things happen. We had hardcore Holly ended up doing pretty damn well, considering how many jokes that we made of, uh, in advance of that. But if you don't know what superstar scores is, that's where we take 10 different categories. They're broken up into five big categories of two per piece. And you rate a wrestler on a 0 to 10 scale, 10 being the highest, 0 being absolutely useless. And you figure out eventually their overall rating out of a score of 100. And uh, I think the highest one we've had so far was Shawn Michaels from uh, overall. And I'm pretty sure he was the highest for me too. I think I gave him like an 84 or something. And we all gave him around like high 80s, early 90s or so. And I think our lowest overall might have been RVD. I'm not 100% positive on that one, though. Go ahead and check out uh, old editions of this on Smack Talk, uh, not on Smack Talk, on SmartOutMoment.com if you want to know how these compare. But let's get right into this. We have two categories for the big category of in-the-ring skills. There's athleticism and psychology. Athleticism is based off of the person's move set, their signature moves, their finishers, whether or not they botch often. And psychology is their storytelling ability in the ring. If they do the proper job with selling during the match, do they keep long matches interesting, or do they get boring if they're wrestling for more than two minutes? That kind of stuff. Uh, I gave Santino a five and a six. Five for athleticism, six for psychology. Because... I'm going to spoil something out here. I gave him almost a middle ground five or six for almost everything because I figured he's good enough, but not amazing, not bad. And I really don't have a whole lot to, to elaborate on for that. Um, let's go around here. Drew, what did you give him for athleticism and for psychology? Well, for athleticism, I gave him a four because the only thing I ever remember him doing is the Cobra thing and a hip toss that he does multiple times. And then for psychology, I gave him a seven because he was very good at doing the same thing every single time he got in the ring. Peyton, what are your scores? I also gave him a middle of the ground five for athleticism. Not particularly bad. And actually, he never really got to show off his full skills. If you saw some of these promos they originally had built for him when he was going to come in as like the the was it was he Russian? I think he was supposed to be, but he was supposed to be like some really badass MMA fighter. He had a lot of really cool like takedowns and all these other things, but that never came to fruition. He came in as the comedy gimmick, which probably is for the best. Uh, he otherwise has never done anything amazing. I do like that hip toss. He does. I think it's one of the best hip tosses in the business or was one of the best hip tosses in the business. Besides that, I mean, his, his moveset sucks. I mean, that dive he does while he's saluting uh, the the Cobra is just one of the worst finishing moves of all time. He does sell uh, Stone Cold Stunner better than almost anybody, I think. <laughs> I loved when he took, took that. Uh, psychology, I'm also going to give him a middle of the ground five. Just just woefully average. Nothing exceptional. Uh, once again, the best moments that he's ever had inside of a match was during the Royal Rumbles that he was in when he had that moment with Mick Foley and the moment with Alberto Del Rio. The crowd really got hyped into his part of the match there. But other than that, I, I couldn't tell you any like amazing spots or amazing moments he's had in matches. They've all been outside of the ring. And Wego, athleticism, psychology. Um, I gave him a five in athleticism just because his moveset <laughs> consisted of duck the clothesline with my weird little split leg thing and hip toss you and then cobra you. So he never did much. Um, as far as psychology goes, again, another five. 
I've never really seen him put a, together a long match to truly judge how he puts them together. So, yeah, it is what it is. So those two are down. We have a couple more that we got to go through. Mike Skills is the next set of two. Charisma and Character. Charisma is basic Mike Skills about cutting a promo, not stuttering, not being repetitive, keeping things fresh. Character is their gimmick, and can they pull off being both a heel and a face? Are they interesting characters in general, or are they the ones that just fall flat with the crowd? And I give them an 8 for both of these, because I figure the best thing about Santino has always been him on the mic and him as a character rather than being an in-ring performer. So an eight to me is enough of a bump up from above average, but not, you know, he, he wasn't a 10 or something like that. Uh, he could cut some promos that were very interesting, but sometimes he got a little bit repetitive and sometimes that kind of you know, really super Italian that pronounces things wrong and stuff. Sometimes it was a bit of a stretch. So not perfect, but still on the good side of things. Drew, charisma, characters, how does he fare on the mic? I gave him a 7 for both of them, mainly because for the same reasons you did. Uh, his The uh, best thing about him was his uh, promos. And for his character, uh, I, he was over for most of it, but then towards the end he was, it was kind of like, oh, hey look, Satino's coming out. How you doing? Yeah. Peyton? For charisma, I'm actually going to give him a 9. I think he was one of the most comfortable people on the mic that they've ever had. He never seemed like he got flustered. He didn't stutter. He always seemed like he knew where he was in the cycle of the, of whatever segment he was in. He was fine with that. He wasn't particularly a unique character, though. It was just kind of another sluppy foreigner comedy guy. So I, I can't give him too high of a rating on the character one. I just gave him an 8, just as you did. It, it's probably a little bit higher than I think he would necessarily deserve, but I'm fine with an eight on that. He did well as a heel. I loved him as a heel. And then when he transitioned over the baby face, I think he did that very well as well. Uh, I, I think he got a little bit stale in the last couple of years. I mean, he really went gung ho with that Cobra thing. And I think he had so much more capabilities than just focusing all of it on that stupid ass Cobra. And Wago, what are your points? I gave him a 7 for both. He was a solid hand on the microphone, but he wasn't something fantastic. Um, I think he was capable, he didn't really stutter, but he could go from having a great promo, which really funny, then to having some of the most god-awful and cringe-worthy. And maybe it was the material he was given, but still, it's enough for me to not give him a higher score where I might have thought I would have. Um, as far as the, uh, what was the other category character goes, I think he's fantastic as a heel. When he was the comedy heel, he worked very well. His interactions with Beth Phoenix, John Cena, all that was great. But as a babyface, it sucked the life out of him, or at least what was left by the end of his heel run. So um, that, that's why he got a 7 from me. He was fantastic as a heel, but just as babyface, he grew stale ever so quick. Then we move on to appearance, physique, and their entrance. Physique, I really don't need to explain that too much. Just the way that they look, their body shape and all that kind of stuff. And their entrance is everything from their music, the pyro, the taunts that they do, any kind of like actual movements that they do in the ring, you know, try to get the crowd interested and all that. And those are two middle of the road fives for me because uh, there's just really nothing that special one way or another for me. Uh, didn't have like the best build, didn't have a particularly bad one didn't really do anything that crazy during his entrance but then he tried a little bit of stuff here and there like that little walk to the ring that power walk thing and all that so there's worse there's better five for both of me drew uh first physique i i gave him a four mainly because i thought it was a little chubby he got a little bit flat not, not nothing wrong with a flat but you know just a four and for the entrance i'm going to be a little nicer i gave him a seven mainly because i i love his music and that little walk, I, I will see people doing, like, uh, that fast walks, like, just for, like, their exercise when they go by my house. And it reminds me of him. And I have a little chuckle every time. Peyton? 
I gave him a four for both of these. His appearance, you said, like you said, he's in shape, but he was never particularly chiseled. When he first came in, he actually had a pretty decent amount of definition to him. But as time went on, I'm sure he just wasn't as motivated to keep in shape because he knew he was just supposed to be a comedy character. Maybe it was even intentional. Maybe he wanted to make himself look like a, like a scrawny, prick, pricky kind of guy. So I'm going to give him a four for that. I'm also giving him a four for entrance really really basic no pyro i love his theme that's the only reason i think it's even as high as it is i hated that power walk he did always bothered the shit out of me um so no high scores there <laughs> and away you go what do you get for appearance i have him as a four on appearance just because of the ugly fucking tattoos he isn't in bad shape but jesus christ just because he was doing a sambo fighter gimmick doesn't mean you have to get the ugly mma tattoos too <laughs> um as far as the entrance goes i gave it a six just because five being an average, eh, the power walk it was something fucking different compared to a lot of guys that just walk to the ring. So, eh, at least he's doing something different to separate him from the pack. Group number four is backstage kind of points, professionalism and marketability. Professionalism is whether or not they were a locker room leader or they caused problems behind the scenes. Do they get involved in politics? Do they put people over or do they screw people over? And I gave him a seven for that because outside of the Jim Cornette story, I haven't really heard anything positive or negative other than people having good stories to tell about him and him being funny and stuff. Marketability is the PR stuff. You know, do they go on talk shows? Do they get in trouble with the law a lot? I gave him about a six for that because he doesn't have a perfect record with the law, but he wasn't somebody who was constantly getting suspended at the wellness policy. He wasn't like... You know, the latest report of him getting drunk and causing a scene or something like that. He's not doing any inflammatory speech out there that he has to apologize for. And I think that he could be somebody in the future that could be a good ambassador for WWE. So seven and a six for me. What does he get for you, Drew? I gave him an eight for professionalism, mainly because, like I said, I've heard... More good, a lot of good things that people have said backstage about him. Not really, nothing bad. And then for marketability, I gave him a seven mainly because I've seen him do uh, some like charity works and also uh, some interviews as well. So I know, so they use him a, a lot of times to for like to be uh, not really a face, but you know, someone that can go out and do these type of things. Someone is uh, picking up stuff in the background, and yeah. Payton. For professionalism, I give him an eight as well. He's just a total t company guy. You know, he'll do whatever they want him to. He'll go out there and dress himself like a female. He'll lose to whatever, make himself look like a total putz. He he had no objections to any of that. He went out there and did whatever he had to do to come to pull, uh, toe the company line. So good for him. Marketability, I'm going to give him just a hair less with a seven, only because he's not exactly a huge name. But he's someone that I think even as uh, if I put myself in the shoes of a executive, I feel like I could totally trust sending him to a Toys R Us for a signing or something like that and not have to watch over everything he's doing. But he's not someone I necessarily would send there as the number one representative to like, I don't know, be a star or whatever it is as the main person representing the company. He's more of like the second or third guy standing in the wings. Imagine like Randy Orton going to a Toys R Us. <laughs> I want to see that now. Him just like staring at the little kids, glaring at them, wanting to punt them in the head. Wago, what's your uh, points for backstage? Um, the highest score I've given him is going to be in professionalism, and that's a nine, just because the guy's never done anything wrong. Uh, the Jim Cornette incident is the only thing going against him, and let's face it, it's been blown way out of proportion. I mean, it's a funny story, and that's why it's gotten so much... Uh, of a following around it, and just Jim Cornette, and he can make you laugh about anything. Um, so, yeah, I got a nine for professionalism. I've never heard a bad word against him. As far as market uh, marketability, I'm just going to echo the same statements as Peyton, so I'm not going to bother going into it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, was he involved with that big pharmacy scandal that happened, like, five years ago? He might have been. I, can't I think really he was recall. one of the people that was on that list. Like, remember when they suspended, like, seven or eight people at once because of that? I think he might have been one of those people. Hmm. But I mean, that's not like super deep. It's just the fact that we that barely the fact we barely know about it and we follow wrestling just kind of means yeah. it's really not going to affect his public image that much. Mm -hmm. uh, time to do research. <laughs> I know Edge was, I know Rey Mysterio was. 
I think Orton. even like Kurt Hawkins and a couple other people were. Orton, Kennedy. Oh. Well, Orton's no question. It's like, oh, some <laughs> a group, group of people got suspended. Better fucking Orton's in there. <laughs> Santino might have been, though. He might have been one of those like kind of shock people. But like Wego said, I mean, we're not remembering it. And mm-hmm. I don't think that would really kill him. Uh, that brings us to the last set of the two sections to vote for popularity and credibility in the crowd reaction section. Popularity, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. Merchandise and booze and cheers and Facebook followers and all that other kind of crap. And credibility is whether or not you could actually see this person being a main event star or if they are the bottom of the barrel just getting squashed by Ryback and jumping on top of another person who's getting squashed by Ryback. Seven to me on popularity because I figure any comedic character could have a short lifespan. And Santino stuck for years. And right now, I mean, people are talking about whether or not Adam Rose can fill that spot. They didn't really need to have that spot. But they became so comfortable with Santino having this spot, he etched his way into that. And that's pretty impressive because he could have been somebody who, after that debut with Umaga, falls flat, they release him a year later or two years later or three years later, but he's been there for quite a while and he's been able to make himself somebody that when he comes out there, he still gets kind of a pop. So give him a seven on that and credibility though, that's where he gets the lowest score for me. He gets a three because Santino never won a match unless it was a way that it made his opponent look worse. He wins the intercontinental title as a fluke because Lashley basically won the match for him. He retained through a bunch of crap and he's won a couple titles and stuff. Sure. But his last title reign, the United States title reign, it got to a point where everybody was just like, Oh, can somebody fucking beat Santino? So we have an actual champion and Cesaro beats him and nobody cares because he didn't beat somebody who had any credibility. So very low score for me on credibility, but hey, you don't need to be the top superstar to make your money. So, uh, Drew, crowd reaction sections. What do you give them for popularity and credibility? For popularity, I gave them a seven, mainly because the kids loved him, and there weren't too many adults out there who were like, "Ah, fuck Santino, it's his shit's annoying." So yeah, I'll give him a seven for that. And for for credibility, I'd be a little bit more generous. There were some times where he, he kind of. It was kind of, uh, it wasn't as much of a fluke win, but, you know, there w- were those times. So, yeah. What would the, the point be that you gave him? Fuck, I don't know. Oh, a four. I thought I said that. Oh, oh total I... score. Oh, yeah, a four. Come on, Mango. Pay attention, son. <laughs> Peyton, what do you think? As far as popularity, I mean, he was way more popular than any comedy character had a right to be. I do you think that there ever could have been another comedy character that the crowd would have gotten so behind to win a Royal Rumble as they did for him in 2010? Could they have done that with any other comedy character? Could you imagine them doing that with like Repo Man? <laughs> like it just could not happen. Uh, well, the guy. What, I, I don't know because the other alternative was Del Rio. I would be <laughs> cheering Repo Man if that was the case. Uh, the the guy has brought like so much fun gotten people into so many things like when he was doing the honka meter he stood up to stone cold steve austin and people got behind that like that's how good he was at getting the crap uh, we're losing paid in the i might lean towards an eight but i i'll say a seven at least and for credibility uh, it's it's pretty low. It's it, I'm, I, you gave a three. I'm actually gonna take it down one lower to a two. I I like him. People like him. But when you're talking about someone who's gonna be a true star and you're gonna depend to have a big time match like that, you're not gonna send out Santino Morel. You need someone who has a lot more oomph behind their name. You're gonna send out Randy Orton. You're gonna send out John Cena. And while he can go out there for one night and have fun and the crowd might be into it, no one's gonna want to see a Santino Morel match at WrestleMania. And Wago, what are your points for crowd reaction? Popularity goes with a six. He's always got a solid pop, and which is great considering his career's been a bit of a yo-yo. He's got staying power, but by no means does anyone really give a shit once he's gone. So he gets a six just because he gets a solid pop. 
Um, as far as his credibility goes, he only gets a free from me. Um, if he beats a jobber, it's believable. But anyone outside of a jobber who he beats, he automatically devalues that person. So my tally comes out to 60 out of 100, which is a little bit above what I think I gave RVD. And maybe even a little bit above what I gave Bob Holly, but it might have been around that same mark. Um, tallying up what everybody else has here, what was your final score, Drew? I got a 62. 62. Peyton, what was yours? 59. The old tree, 59. And Wago? 59. Another 59. So we have 240 points between the four of us, and that means that that comes out to an average of... Let me get my calculator out here just to be sure, because oh, I don't want to be a complete jackass. And uh, this part's going to get cut. A 60. Exactly the same as my score. So, yeah. Mango's right. Fuck it. 6 out of 10. I mean, that's not bad. That's kind of what we were giving him for most of the other stuff. It's a little bit above average. And for a career where you're a jobber and you're supposed to be laughed at the majority of the time, 6 out of 10, pretty good, I got to say. Because there is always a chance that you could be a 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10. Even just a 5 out of 10, I mean, that's 10 extra points there. So kudos to Santino for breaking a lot of the barriers in that kind of way. And for, I think, doing a little bit better than what uh, RVD's score was overall. <laughs> Wago is, like, so mad right now. Uh, <laughs> so tell us what you guys end up rating him with your uh, set of the 10 different categories that we have. And we have one more thing that we got to do for this episode. we got to break down what happened this week with the Fantasy League. So stay tuned to the next part, and that'll be it for us on this episode.